question, Joanne? What's it makes you happy to have it in your ear? Will that affirmation work? You were brilliant so much. Um, before I start my talk today, I wanted to talk about another issue that came up over the weekend that we were talking about. Our beloved Reverend Jimmy got robbed Friday night. And we were talking about the things that she could do to protect herself or what people have done or how to go look for what she's lost. But I want to talk a few minutes about how we protect ourselves with our consciousness and energetically. If you think of it as two parallel roads or two people walking along together, like this, and one is the thief and one is you, your frequency and your consciousness are resonating together. So they're going to see you and you're going to be open to them for them to come and let that happen. So while you're doing the physical protection things, you also need to protect your home and protect your car consciously. And you can do that in many different ways. How many times have you heard people say, surround yourself with a white light of safety? Or we do it in all different ways depending upon what your belief system is. But let's use that one for an example. So you see this white light all around you and the intention is, that nobody can hurt you, nobody can harm you, that you'll be safe wherever you go. So take that and expand that. Put that around your home, out to the edge of your property, below your house so that you're not going to be on an earthquake, above your house so something isn't going to fall in on you like a, like a tree. Mm -hmm. And do it that way. Do it with your car. I had a friend who used to see, she had cute little Volkswagen, the new ones, and she'd see a big pink ribbon that was wrapped all around it with this big bow on top. And she used Jesus a lot in her, in her religion, her belief. And she saw him tying that bow and protecting her. Wow. What you're doing is putting yourself on a different timeline. So while the thief is on this timeline meeting these people of light consciousness, think of it as a road again. He, the thief is veered off this way. You're now on a different timeline. You're up here veering off this way. So you're going to be invisible to that person. They're not going to see you. Your time is going to be different. You'll be late getting out. If it's somebody that's going to mug you on a street, maybe you're held up in the office with an extra phone call so you don't intercept. Or at the airport, you're late for the plane or the plane is held over and then you miss the one that crashed or that something happened to it, they won't see your home. How many times have you walked down the street and all of a sudden there's a new building? And you go like, where did that come from? Because you didn't see it. And they won't see you in the same way. It's like putting a cloak of invisibility around you. So do it daily until you believe it. And when you use an affirmation with it, your affirmation is going to be nothing that is mine may be taken from me that it's yours. And if you can't find it in the house, you're gonna find it because it's yours. And it'll turn up. But it's like anything else, you have to create the belief of it and you've gotta do it over and over till you believe it. Uh, and when you have a fear, a fear messes up your protection, it puts a weak spot in it. So I don't remember if it was last year or the year before when there was a murderer running back and forth between the North Fork Ranchuria and the one in Albury. And everybody was talking about locking their doors and doing the sexual protection. And I listened to that conversation and took part in it. And when I got home, I realized that I had to, first of all, lock my door. But then I had to redo my protection. Because by being part of the other, I had lowered my consciousness. Think of it as we're looking for an average. So if I'm partaking in news or talking to people or anything that is below where I'd like to think I am, and I'll use up and below, not that one's better or the other. But it's an average. Wherever I am in my belief is diluted by what I've allowed in my consciousness from what I'm interacting with. So when you guys get in the car today, put that light all around your car. See your car floating in it. Do the same with your house, and if you like your neighbor, do your neighbor's house. Or your street, so that it's there all the time. So it goes with you, and it's with you, and work on your affirmation to go with it. So, now back to what I want to talk about. <laughs> um, I want to talk about intentions today. They go hand in hand with affirmations. An affirmation usually has an intention.
For example, Joanne's is that she never has any more trouble with her electronics, that it goes smoothly, easily, and effortlessly. And she's going to use her affirmation to do her belief system, to work on embodying that belief so that it's, it's a part of her, the same as, as breathing. So automatically everything works, or Jonna shows up all the time to fix it for you. <laughs> Either way. Yeah, it works. Uh, <laughs> yes, honey, that's all you need. So we've heard a lot about intention. <laughs> I love it. Wayne Dyer talks about it. Everybody talks about it. I want to talk about how we use that daily to live. How does that play in to what's going on with that, and how does that work? I was talking about it down at the Fresno Church, and before me, uh, Gail had done a, a treatment, and she was talking about getting up in the morning and really noticing the beauty of the day, accepting that it's going to be a good day, that it's going to be <clears throat> wonderful and beautiful, and she'd see that all day. And that's what an intention is. Instead of getting up, how many times, we've all woken up, hungover or cranky or something going on or not wanting to go to work that day or not wanting to face something, and we start worrying about it as soon as we get up. We don't come out of bed and say, oh, I'm so glad to be awake and I'm so glad it's going to be a beautiful day and I'm going to smile at everybody I meet and have a good day. So intention becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. What are you saying your day's going to be like? When you go into a job interview, are you going in and saying, man, I'm going to snake this. I know I'm good and I know they're going to want me. Or do you go in with the intention of, boy, I hope I remember to answer it right and I hope they don't ask me that question and I hope that I don't sweat and I hope that I do everything that they want me to do. Or going to school for a test. I know I'm going to ace that test. Is that my intention? When I got out of bed that morning, did I intend I'm going to enjoy my day at school and I'm going to get whatever I need on that test? Or did I worry about, did I study enough? Did I know it? If you start thinking about what I've been saying, there's a thread running through that. Worry. Worry negates intentions. It negates affirmations. If we worry about something, that's a component and aspect of fear. That means that Somehow we haven't done enough to have it, or to be it, or to manifest it. So we're afraid, and because we're afraid, we worry. And because we worry, it doesn't matter all the treatments we do. We're going to undo our treatments. We're going to undo our affirmations. We're going to manifest a self-fulfilling prophecy of whatever the worry is about. So it's up to us to take responsibility for how our day is going to be. What's our perception of our life going to be? When you start a new job, do you go into that, I'm going to ace it and they're going to love me? When you start a new relationship, do you go into it that I'm going to be the best person in this relationship I can be? I'm going to be what people want me to be, to work on those kind of things. Worry, we've all done it. But I think one of the biggest ones that I've noticed so much being a therapist is how we worry for our children. And we worry that they're going to get into drugs. We worry that they're not going to study enough and do well in school. They're not going to get into the college we want them to get into. They're not going to have a job. They're not making good financial decisions. They're going to wreck the car. All these kind of things. Worry, worry, worry. And what are we manifesting for those kids? We're manifesting drugs. We're manifesting car wrecks. We're manifesting poor grades. 